Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Nadia Sands, and you are watching another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Why is it exciting? Oh, I'll tell you. Today is gonna be our very first tutorial in Adobe Lightroom. What is Adobe Lightroom? It's a very powerful photo editing application, way better than Photoshop. So today's tutorial is meant to be a very basic walkthrough of how to get a photo into Lightroom, doing a basic edit, and then exporting that photo so you can upload it to Instagram, Facebook, whatever you wanna do with the photo. Print it out for your mom, print it out for your grandma, whatever you wanna do with the photo, I'm gonna show you guys how to get it into Lightroom very basic editing of it, what all the sliders do, kind of where everything is in the application and then exporting it and then we'll be done. Pretty simple, but hopefully after today's lesson, you guys will be a little less afraid of Adobe Lightroom and go to use it more when you're editing photos. If you guys wanna follow along with what we'll be editing today, the link is in the video description to download the photo. Now, before we even open Lightroom, I'm gonna suggest if you have a camera that can shoot raw, absolutely 100% shoot raw. You have more dynamic range, more to play with in the edit. If you're shooting photos to JPEG, you're gonna have way less room, way less dynamic range and the edits aren't gonna come out is clean. So if your camera can shoot raw, make sure you turn your camera setting to shoot raw before you bring photos in the Lightroom. The photo in the link in the video description is a raw photo. So we have a lot to play with in the edit. So download the photo, open up Adobe Lightroom because we're getting started. All right, guys, first things first, the photo that I downloaded, I put into my photo library in a folder called Buddha. Now, what I do recommend doing is having one central folder on your hard drive that Lightroom can reference as the photo library. So any photo you take, you just throw in that folder and then you can import later. Pretty important from an organizational standpoint. So I dropped the photo into the photo library and that's step one. And step two is gonna be coming down here and opening up Lightroom. Now, when you first open up Lightroom, it looks a little bit intimidating, I will agree, but the only things we're gonna be dealing with today are library and develop. Those are the only two things that we're gonna focus on. So don't worry about all of these other things up here. It's just these two. So under the library tab, what we'll do is come down here to the bottom left to import and we'll navigate to the folder where the photo is and then we'll come down here and we'll just click import. Pretty simple. Now the photo is imported into our Lightroom library and now we can move over to the develop tab. Now that we're in the develop tab, let's check out what we're looking at. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of different presets that come with Lightroom. So if you wanted to come in here and uh, you know just preview some of these, you can just scroll over them with your mouse to kind of see what your image would look like with some of these presets. Or you can be a pro and we can edit the photo with all of these manual adjustments on the right-hand side. Starting from the top, we have basic adjustments, tone curve, HSL and color, split toning, detail, lens corrections, transform effects, and calibration. Yes, it is a lot. I promise it's not as difficult as it looks. And then up here at the top, we have some other effects that we will go over once we get through all of our basic adjustments. Now, what I recommend doing for any photo is starting from the top and working your way down. So let's tool open the basic adjustments. And as you can see, we have some white balance and temperature controls here, exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and we have some clarity and vibrance and saturation. You should be used to seeing all of these things in pretty much any photo editing application. So let's start with just editing this photo. I'm gonna give it a little bit of contrast, not too much. I'm gonna bring down the highlights because uh, we have some overexposure things happening here. Maybe I'll bring down my shadows a little bit. I'll bring down my whites and I'll bring down my blacks just a touch. And then if you wanna be a super pro photo editor, take your clarity slider and throw it all the way up to 100 so you can get sick. No, please don't added 100% clarity, that's not what I want you to do. What I do recommend doing is keeping it somewhere in the ballpark of like 30 and below, but what it's doing is it's basically just giving your image a little bit more clarity with a bunch of contrast and some adjustments. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep that right at about 25. You can click on this number here and you can manually input the value yourself so you don't have to focus on the slider as much. This dehaze slider is meant to undercompensate or overcompensate for light bleeds. So what I'll do is I'll actually just dehaze it just a touch, maybe five. And then with vibrance and saturation, vibrance will kind of saturate all the colors that aren't used to being saturated, whereas saturation will just saturate everything in equal amount. So I like to give just a little bit more vibrance than saturation. So maybe we'll turn the vibrance up to 12 and we'll do our saturation at five. We don't want to go too crazy with it. Coming down next to tone curve. Uh, this is what you're used to seeing in any photo editing application as well. It is just a curves adjustment. And what I'm gonna do here and what I do on pretty much every photo is give it a nice S curve. So we'll make two points here. Up here is gonna be our highlights, our midtones, and our lows, and our shadows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it an S curve. Now a very aggressive S curve would look something like this, where it looks like an S, but as you can see, it's doing way too much here. So we're actually gonna minimize this S curve and just give it a very, very slight S curve. Then what I'll do is come over and grab my highs and just bring them down just a touch. So that's not so crazy overexposed. And then what I'll do is come down here to my shadows and I will just raise this up just to give it that nice faded black look. 
All right, cool, looking good on Tone Curve. Next on the list is going to be HSL and Color. And now you guys may have it set to Hue or Saturation, but what I recommend doing is coming over here to the All tab so you can see everything that you got going on in here. And this is a very powerful tab. You can adjust the Hue, the Saturation, and the Luminance for each individual color in the spectrum for your photo. So let's take a look at the reds. I can shift my red hues over into the magenta and really pay attention to like the E here and the top of the champagne bottle. You can adjust it over into the magenta or you can bring it up into the orange. So you can do a lot with all of these individual colors in the hue. You could also oversaturate the reds or desaturate the reds along with every other color as well. And the luminance, you can make that brighter or you can make it darker depending on what you want, again, for every color in the spectrum. And this is a very powerful tab that you guys should definitely utilize. So for this image, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna saturate the reds and I'm gonna bring it up in the luminance just a bit because that's what I want to really call out in this photo is our reds. Now, pretty much any of these sliders is gonna be very subjective to you. Whatever you guys wanna do to the photo, absolutely do it. And definitely experiment with all of these things and see what each one of them does to your photo. Now, a little caveat to this is you you can over edit a photo. You can over edit a video. You can use too many video effects. You can absolutely over edit a photo. And the key to a good photo edit is going to be very subtle edits. So definitely don't go too graciously with all of these sliders, but definitely experiment and see what they do to your photo and then dial it back a little bit as needed. So that's something pretty good to me so far. Let's go down to split toning. And basically what split toning allows you to do is give a hue to your highlights and your shadows. So if I saturate it and I bring it up here to like the orange area, what I can do is I can actually give a hue to my highlights and my shadows individually if I wanted to. And you can get some really cool effects out of this. So I'm doing like a teal and orange type vibe here. And then what I can do is I can just dial this back a pretty gracious amount so that it doesn't look so crazy, but I'm doing it just enough to give it a little bit of uh, cool color in the highlights and shadows. Kind of a more advanced tab. We'll cover this in later episodes of Lightroom tutorials, but let's move on to the detail tab. And the first thing you see up here is this little square, which is highlighting a certain part of the image. And if you click on this little adjustment button here, you can point it to a different direction. And what I recommend doing is putting it on an area of high and low contrast. So here we have a part of the light and we also have low contrast from the shadows. And here's where you'll really be able to see what going on. So you can give it some sharpening if you'd like, where you can really see the detail here. If we zoom in down here as well, uh, if I crank this all the way up to 150, it's really giving a lot of sharpening, but I don't think we need that much. So maybe we'll just dial it back just a bit maybe in the 50s range. And then down here under noise reduction, the luminance noise reduction, watch how crazy this is. See how much grain there is like kind of in this area of the E. If I boost this up, it really smooths it out and gets rid of a lot of the noise and a lot of the grain that was happening in the photo. So I like to use this uh, sparingly. So maybe we'll keep this at about 50, but again, a little bit more advanced. We can get into it in later episodes, but this is just an overview of all of these tabs. So I like the way that that's looking right there. Lens corrections. If you shot the photo on a very specific camera or lens, what you can do is enable a profile correction. I shot this on a Sony with a 24 to 70 lens. So what I can do is I can uh, initiate that lens. And if we zoom out here, every tab on this uh, right-hand side has a little click on and off button. So if I click it off, you can see that it's just correcting some of the vignetting on the side that happened from the lens. So use this if you used a very specific lens. The transform tab, you can skew the crap out of your photo in any sort of way. Uh, I personally never touch any of this stuff, but you guys can use it to your will. Down under the effects, we can give it a vignette a black vignette or a white vignette, depending on what you want to do. Again, I don't really use vignettes too much unless I'm doing like a portrait shot. So I wouldn't really use this on something like this. And then we have some grain. So we can actually come back in and add in a little bit more grain to our photo to give it more of a traditional film look. Obviously 100% is way too much. So maybe we'll give it like 20. We'll give it 20% grain and you can adjust the size and the roughness of the grain as well. And our last tab in the list is the calibration tab. We can tint our shadows into the green or the magentas, and we can also adjust our RGB colors in both hue and saturation. So in my red hues, I can turn it over into the magenta and it's really doing a lot here. I can also crank it up into the yellow orange and we can really adjust our RGB values based on these sliders. So what I'll do is I'll saturate my reds just a bit because I do wanna call out those reds in this photo. And I'm actually going to desaturate my greens and my blues just a bit so that red is the primary color that we're seeing in this photo. So now that we've gone through all of the tabs on the right hand side, let's come all the way up to these things up here, starting with the one on the left, which is your crop. As you can see, the photo was not shot straight and we have some stuff going on on this side of the frame that I don't really want. So what I'll do is I'll click on the crop. 
on the right or the left or the top, you can see that it turns into a little arrow icon. And what I can do is actually just adjust the rotation of this and you can see the grid lines on the photo. I'm gonna to try to line up one of those grid lines to the top of the bench as much as possible so we can get a nice straight line. So right about there looks good, so I'm gonna let that go. And then I'm gonna come over here to the left side, kind of crop it in past this wire here. Maybe give it a little crop on this side as well. And we'll give it a little bit more headroom on the top of the photo, just like that. And we'll come down here to done so that we can set our crop accordingly so it's not all skewed because I'm a bad photographer, I'm sorry. Actually, no, I did it for the lesson so I could show you how to use the crop and skew tool. That's what I did. All right, now that we've cropped and skewed to our heart's content, the next one over on the right is the spot removal tool. Now, if we click on any of these up here, it's going to turn into a brush situation. So if I come over here, I can use my mouse wheel to scroll up and increase the size and decrease the size of the brush. So if you guys have a scroll wheel, definitely use that. Or you can come over here and manually adjust the size of the brush, bigger or smaller. You can also adjust the feather. So all the way down at zero will be no feather on the brush. All the way over at 100 will be a lot of feather. You can tell by the outside circle and the inside circle. And the one underneath that is opacity, which is how much you see the effect that you're doing. I recommend, especially for spot removal, to keep that at 100% and don't really move it. And then up here, you can see that we have a clone and a heel brush. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna get rid of this black square up here and still maintain the aspect ratio of the photo. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that it's set to clone and I'm gonna come up here, maybe reduce the size of my brush just a bit. And I'm just gonna paint over this black spot. And what that will do is it will clone a different part of the image into the spot that you're trying to get rid of. So for example, if I drag it over here to the champagne, it's grabbing images from the champagne and putting it up in the corner, which is not what we want. What we want to do is kind of bring it up as close as humanly possible to the area that you're trying to clone and get rid of it by slowly sliding down. And then once you've done it, just let go. And now we've done some spot removal. As you can see down here, we also have some spots that I like to remove. So by hitting Z on the keyboard, we can zoom in and then holding down the space bar and clicking and dragging. What we can do is come down in here and just kind of get rid of some of these little specks. So what I'll do is just single click right on that spec. It will tell me where it's sampling from. And now we can do that for pretty much every little spot that we want to remove in this photo. So I'm not gonna do too many of these or else the tutorial is gonna be super long, but guys, that is a really great way to get rid of small artifacts in your photo by just using the clone or the heel brush. Now both clone and heel will do similar things to your photo, but again, you're gonna to wanna to experiment with these things and see which one works best for your photo. It's very subjective. So once you're done doing all your spot removals, come down and hit done. Then the next one over on the list is going to be red eye correction. So if you have a photo with red eyes in it, you can very simply click on this, click on the eyes and it will get rid of the red eye. Since we don't have eyes in this photo, kind of going to be hard to do. So these last three over here, the rectangle, the circle and the little brush all work very similarly where they are masks. So this is a square mask. This is a radial mask and this is a very detailed brush adjustment. So very quickly here, what I can do is I can click on the graduated filter, this little uh, rectangle here and I can just kind of click and drag onto my photo and you'll see that it kind of adds some red in. Now, what exactly is that doing? The red is basically to show you where the mask is and you can adjust the mask color over here. If you wanted to make it blue, you can do that. If you wanted to make it you know, purple, you can just kind of see where the mask is affecting in the area. And then you can also turn down the saturation so you don't see the color at all. And now what I can do is I can come down here and I can lower the exposure of just this mask. And now what it's doing is it's giving me like a nice kind of like gradual exposure filter that I can put anywhere on the image. And if I wanna get rid of this, I can just click and delete and all of these parameters work inside of that mask. Very similar to the radial mask. I can come down here, I can draw a circle and what it's doing is it's affecting the area outside of the circle. So I could also click invert to affect the area inside the circle. You can adjust your feather and you can adjust the different parameters so I can underexpose the living crap out of the inside of the circle, which is something I'd never do. I'm just doing it to show you what it does. But the real powerful thing is actually going to be our brush adjustment tool. So if I click on this brush, and I can still kind of see that there's a lot of overexposed areas in my champagne. So what I'll do is I'll actually just paint over the top of my champagne bottle here and then come down here to my color, turn down the saturation to zero so I can see where I am affecting. And I'm going to drop the highlights of just the champagne bottle. And now you can see if I overexpose it, it's overexposing it and I can underexpose the highlights just to kind of get rid of some of the more aggressive highlights in my champagne. Now, if I hit O on the keyboard, it will bring up the mask where it's at. So I can come in here and zoom in. And instead of using the brush tool, I can come over here to the erase tab and I can actually erase some of the outside of this. So it's not affecting the wall behind the champagne, but just the champagne itself. 
So something like that looks good. I can hit O again. And uh, if I wanted to come in here and just actually click on all of the lights right here, I can actually do that. And what it's doing is it's adding to the dropped highlights section of the first mask that we did. So what I'm doing is just reducing the highlights of all of the lights on this mask. Now, a way you can see what's affecting on each mask is just by mousing over the little circle here, and it will tell you everything that's incorporated in that mask and everything that's applied here. Now, if I wanted to add a separate mask, what I would have to do is come over here and click done, and then come up here to my mask brush again, and then create a new mask based on what I wanna do. So if I wanted to really come in here and saturate this vase for whatever reason, uh, I'm gonna drop the saturation of the mask down and then I'm gonna boost up my saturation here. And as you can see, it's just oversaturating the vase or I can completely desaturate the vase if I wanted to. And then this mask is for the vase. And then this mask over here is for my highlights and you can see by just mousing over each one. But if I wanted to delete this, all you gotta do is click on that mask and hit delete. Now, this mask brush tool is a very, very, very powerful tool, and it allows you to really go in there and do a lot of cool things, including sharpening and unsharpening. So if I wanted to come down here and actually just highlight the entire bottom half of this image, just like so, I can now come over here, turn the saturation of this down again, and then I'm gonna unsharpen this so that it blurs out everything on the bottom of my photo. And what I can do is if I don't think that negative 100 is enough, I can just right click on this mask and duplicate it. And now it's technically negative 200, duplicate it again, negative 300, and it's really making the bottom half of this photo unsharpened. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done. And I think that that's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is export this to my hard drive by coming down here to the bottom where the image is, right clicking on it, going to export, export. And then you're gonna to export to a specific folder. I'm exporting to my photo library into a folder called exported photos. You can rename the file if you'd like. I like to keep it the original file name. We can come down here to file settings. I'm exporting it to a JPEG and SRGB at 100% quality. I'm not resizing the image and I'm not sharpening it on export. So what I can do is go ahead and click export. And now ladies and gentlemen, you have exported to your hard drive. And if you wanted to, you can take everything that we just did in this edit by coming over here to the presets folder by clicking on this add new preset create preset and we're going to call this kitchen wine and you can either check all or check none i like to keep all of them checked and we can click create and under user presets kitchen wine will now be a preset that you can apply to other various photos that you've taken now i understand that lightroom can be a little intimidating and a little confusing but hopefully after watching this video you're a little less afraid of lightroom today than you were yesterday my biggest recommendation and the most advice i can give you is to really just go in there and experiment with everything all of the sliders all of the parameters just start messing with as much stuff as humanly possible to see what it does to your photo and then dial it back based on your personal preference there is no exact science to photo editing you can do too much you can do too little it's whatever you guys think looks good for your photo that about does it today for this tutorial guys thank you again for watching i will be doing more adobe lightroom tutorials in the future i promise if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed we do them here weekly at learn how to edit stuff if you guys have any questions for me hit me up on twitter at naughty and sands i will try to reply to everybody but subscribe check out the last video video that you missed and I will see you next time.